hi everyone happy wednesday how are you guys doing so do you guys remember the video about smollett so my nigerian brothers have decided to make a documentary revealing all the secret how it started what happened and like this was like the most historic uh forged did i say hate crime that this guy called smollett from the left of course uh, tried to pin on maga supporters tried to accuse maga supporters like trump supporters for doing this to him like he concocted everything he planned everything of how he wanted it to be acted out remember this guy is, a, is an actor he coached these two nigerian brothers to you know make it look real this documentary comes into parts so i don't know it's like eight parts i don't know how many i don't want to guess but this is crazy so anyway let's jump right into this video and thank you guys for watching us usual they took our beautiful bench <laughs> this is where we waited for jesse to come before we attacked them now at 5 30 wgn has obtained surveillance video of those two brothers buying items likely used in the alleged attack let's go to tom negevin who's live on the north side with that story tom that's right, and that part of the story Micah and Joe does pertain to those brothers, the Asandero brothers, who've been talking to police and prosecutors at 26 and Cal, the Cook County Criminal Courthouse. We know they're there today. We know now where they were on Monday, January 28th, just hours before Jussie Smollett reported a hate crime in the Streeterville neighborhood. Take a look at the video of them on that day here in the Uptown neighborhood at a beauty supply shop. What you're seeing them purchase are a couple of balaclavas or ski masks, along with some gloves that they bought at this nondescript shop in Uptown and a red cap. Specifically, we're told by staff here, they sought out those items. They don't sell a whole lot of ski masks here, they tell me, but these two brothers seem very eager to pick them up and seemed very urgent about that. According to a store security guard, who tells me the brothers stood out in his mind. He had questions about their purchases, about what they were doing there, and, well, he believes he knows the answers now. So we got here with 10 minutes to spare, and we had to plan our escape route to survey the land. His building is actually right here. And look, this video shows one of the brothers doing handstands on a treadmill in the gym in Jussie Smollett's apartment building right above the stairs that we're going to attack them at. We made sure we got there at 2 a.m. sharp. On the dot. On the dot. We had no phones because he did not want us to bring any phones. He said, so we don't lose them. I don't know if that's really the reason, but you can deduce your own reason. So 2 a.m., he was nowhere to be found. He was not there. So we were like, damn, what do we do? We didn't have no way of contacting him. He had no way of contacting us. So we waited here for about, what, four, four minutes? It was about four, four, minutes, four minutes, but it felt like forever. Because it was cold as balls. And it is cold outside. A dangerous and deadly polar vortex is sweeping the coldest air in a generation into the country's midsection. The upper Midwest will face temperatures 20 to 40 degrees lower than normal today. Wind chills are as low as negative 65 in parts of Wisconsin and Minnesota. Chicago will be colder today than parts of the Arctic Circle. So I saw him out the corner of my eye, and I was like, okay, that's him. Let's go. I went to the subway and got the order. During that time, I texted my manager, thinking that he was still in Australia because he was on an Australian tour with one of his other clients. Mm -hmm. And I said, yo, call me when you can. He called me immediately. And while he was on the phone, I uh, heard, as I was crossing the intersection, I heard Empire. And I don't answer to Empire. <laughs> My name ain't Empire. We gotta go get this Empire, f Yeah, that's him. That's him. Is that him? That's that nigga. It's that nigga. Get that nigga. Oh, he's moving fast. Come on, let's get him. Get that nigga. My name ain't Empire. Uh, and I didn't answer. I kept walking, and then I heard, 
empire. Skip. As we cross the street, we said hey to get his attention. Hey, Nick. Hey. He turned around, looked at us, and that's when we started yelling uh, the famous slurs he wanted us to yell. Hey, aren't you that empire? Hey, hey, Nick. Empire fat Nick. It's MAGA country. Yeah. And then he said, what did you say to me? So I turned around and I said, the f did you just say to me? And I see the uh, attacker uh, masked. And he said, it's this MAGA, MAGA country. country yeah. Punches me right in the face. And then that's when I threw the first punch at him. I held the blow because I didn't want to hurt him, of course. So I made it look real, but I held it. Then we started tussling, moving, moving around, and then I threw him to the ground. He wanted it to look like he fought back. That was very important for him. So I punched his ass back. And then um, we started tussling. You know, it was very icy. And we ended up tussling, tussling by the stairs. Moving, moving around. Uh, fighting, fighting, fighting. There was a second person involved who was kicking me in my back. And uh, then it just stopped. Because he said, hey, don't just beat my ass. Make it look like I'm fighting back and whatnot. So we did that. And then I threw him to the ground. And while after I threw him to the ground, I he had no bruise. I wanted it to look more real. So then I threw him to the ground. After I threw him to the ground, I used my knuckle and gave him a noogie. So I went like this. Why did I do that? To give him a scar, to give him a mark, to make it look real, like he really did get his ass beat. After I did that, I fake kicked him. I don't know what he was doing. I wasn't paying attention. That's where I came around with the bleach, the infamous bleach in the hot sauce bottle, poured it on his shirt. Then I finally put the rope around his face. I did not put it around his neck. I just placed it on his face, and that's when we took off. I saw where they ran, and the phone was in my pocket, but it had fallen out, and it was sitting there, and my manager was still on the phone. So I picked up the phone, and I said, Brandon, and he's like, what's going on? And I said, I was just jumped. And I, then I looked down, and I see that there's a rope around my neck, which I hadn't You hadn't noticed that, it before? No, you didn't because see? it was so fast. You know what I'm saying? It was so fast. Rope around his face. I did not put it around his neck. I just placed it on his face. How long did this all... It felt Take like minutes, but it probably was like 30 seconds, honestly. I can't tell you, honestly. Um, I noticed the rope around my neck, and I started screaming. And I said, there's a rope around my neck. The investigation broke wide open after these two bodybuilding brothers, Abel and Ola Osendairo, reportedly accused Smollett of rehearsing the attack and paying them $3,500 plus an additional $500 when they returned from a trip to Nigeria. This is the Crafty Beaver Hardware Store in Chicago, where the brothers reportedly say Smollett directed them to buy the rope that was made into a noose and put around the actor's neck. Apparently, this is where the suspects bought the rope. Jesse Smollett described. Ola was an extra on Smollett's show Empire, playing a prisoner in this scene with Taraji P. Henson and Terrence Howard. I'm not a gay. I'm not a hustle man. This is Ola's audition tape, and he doesn't just act tough. We've learned that Ola pled guilty to aggravated battery in 2011. He's also appeared in the TV show Chicago PD. There are other intriguing connections between Smollett and the brothers. Inside Edition found this video of Abel working out to a Jesse Smollett song. He even tagged Jesse on Instagram, Jesse Smollett. Ha ha, I love you. And look. This video shows one of the brothers doing handstands on a treadmill in the gym in Jussie Smollett's apartment building. Police say the two brothers are the shadowy figures caught on surveillance cameras the night of the alleged attack. Smollett made this up. What kind of impact is that going to have on other people who come forward to tell stories that are true about it, assault? It, I think that's the real impact here. If it is found that Smollett and these gentlemen did in some way perpetrate something that is not true, they ought to face accountability to the maximum. It appears that Jussie Smollett tried to manufacture a hate crime to make Trump supporters look bad. You will pay restitution to the city of Chicago in the amount of $120,106. You are fined 
$25,000, which is the maximum fine. And you will spend the first 150 days of your sentence in the Cook County Jail. And that will start today, right here, right now. No, I would just like to say to Your Honor that I am, uh, I am not... Okay. I am not. Okay. I am not. I am innocent, and I am not. If I did this, then it means that I stuck my fist in the fears of black Americans in this country for over 400 years, and the fears of the LGBTQ community. Your Honor, I respect you, and I respect the jury, but I did not do this, and I am not. And if anything happens to me when I go in there, I did not do it to myself, and you must all know that. I respect you, Your Honor. I respect your decision. Jail time. Jail time. I am not. Okay. Mr. Uche, let me inquire. Are there any post-sentencing motions you care to present? Court is adjourned. I am not. Stop laughing at my I am not. And I am innocent. I could have that I was guilty a long time ago. You know, the funniest thing is he's not even backing down. He still claims this was a hate crime and there was no hate crime here. These brothers were his friends. They would show the video of the brothers working out on his treadmill. Like, why did you have to create a fake hate crime with your friends that maybe people see you with that you walk around with them that they've been with you in the on the set so i heard he did all this so that 50 cents or whoever owns the empire can give him a raise listen if you're tired of your job and you want a raise, and your boss doesn't want to give you a raise. I don't think this is like the best decision to uh, come up with. It's either you talk with your boss, and if he refuses to give you a raise, just quit the job. Try looking for another job. Stop creating fake hate crimes and accusing others for things that they never did, like. You people, you people, you will never leave Trump supporters alone, ever. Like, what was the purpose? Now, what did you gain by this? Of course, he gained fame. They interviewed him. But thank goodness, the truth will always come out. I want to watch the entire episodes. I want to watch the entire episode of this expose. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Yeah, I didn't interrupt so much. I didn't, I didn't interrupt at all in this video. And thank you guys for watching. See you. This was just like a reaction video. I don't know what I did. But anyways, don't forget to like, comment, be nice in the comment section. And see you in my next upload. Hit.